Today's scripture reading in God's Word is Acts 2, 1 through 4. When the day of Pentecost came, they were all together in one place. Suddenly a sound like the blowing of a violent wind came from heaven and filled the whole house where they were sitting. They saw what seemed to be tongues of fire that separated and came to rest on each of them. All of them were filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak in tongues as the Spirit enabled them. So be it. phones in your hand all the time, right? Now I want you to think about something before we pray. Somebody designed this cup, right? For what purpose? To hold a beverage so that we could drink it, okay? Mm. We are created beings created by God to bring Him glory and honor, to worship and praise Him so that the world will see we don't have any holes in us. We're complete. Jesus Christ paid the penalty of our sins and we are filled with the Holy Spirit so that springs of living water well up from us. Father in heaven, we do thank you and praise you. We thank you this day as we celebrate Pentecost that Jesus did leave so that he could send the Spirit so that greater things could be done through his church. Lord, fill us with your Spirit today to do mighty things for you and for the kingdom to be a light to this world. May our good deeds glorify you. May we bring honor to you in our worship. May we realize that we are created vessels, created to bring you glory and honor. And then we sinned, we caused the problems in this world, and you still loved us. Even though we constantly rebelled, you continue to love us. And you gave your Son, your one and only Son, to die for our sins so that we could be put back into a right relationship with you. And then you filled us with your spirit so that we could live a life that would bring you glory and honor. Fill us today, Lord, not to do our will, but to do the will that we were created for, to bring you glory and honor. We pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. So last week I talked about that Jesus just one day up and left his disciples. Happened to be the 40th day, and we talked about that a little bit. And they were on their way to... Uh, the uh, mount, and, you know, I don't think they knew what was going on. I don't think they knew what was going on from what Jesus told them at that point, because even then they asked if Jesus was going to restore the kingdom of Israel at that time. They were looking with their eyes and thinking with their minds, not being renewed by the Spirit. And the Spirit, Jesus has already breathed on them and given them the Spirit. But Pentecost is the day that the Spirit came in mighty power to equip us for the mission that we had because Jesus had left us. Not left us as orphans, but left us with a mission to do. And here we are on day 50, the day of Pentecost. I'm going to begin by reading in Acts 1, verses 1 through 9. On my, in my first book, O Theopolis, I wrote about all that Jesus began to do and to teach until the day He was taken up to heaven. After giving instructions through the Holy Spirit to the apostles He had chosen, after His suffering, He presented Himself to them with many convincing proofs that He was alive. He appeared to them over a span of 40 days and spoke to them about the kingdom of God. He tied everything together with the Old Testament, which is what they had for Scripture at that time. All of these things that we kind of read through and say, are they relevant today? And we're going to talk about that and kind of do some history lesson and tie that all together today. All of that points to a God who is so faithful, so loving, so merciful, so kind, and a stiff-necked, rebellious people who don't live as they're created like that cup. 
We know we're created beings, but we want to fill ourselves with our own desires, whatever it is that we want to do. We don't want others to drink from that cup. We want to fill ourselves up. We're just self-centered, stiff-necked people. But yet we call ourselves the children of God. Does that sound familiar? We've seen the mighty works of God. We've seen His love for us, and yet we still live our lives as though we are not foreigners and exiles on this earth. And I know I do it, and I know you do it. I'm not pointing fingers that way. I'm pointing fingers this way. And Jesus stuck around after His resurrection for 40 more days, teaching them about their importance in this kingdom, who they are as created individuals for God, to bring Him glory and honor, and how this ties together so much now with the fact that Jesus came and died for their sins, that they have been forgiven, that they are freed from the penalty of death and freed from the power that Satan and sin has over them in this world. In verse 4, And while they were gathered together, He commanded them, Do not leave Jerusalem, but wait for the gift the Father has promised which you have heard me discuss. For John baptized with water, but in a few days you will be baptized with the Holy Spirit. Not just a breathing upon of the Holy Spirit, but filled to the brim. That cup is filled and flowing over and will continue to flow and well up and spring up as the Spirit reveals Jesus to, it, to you in your life. To the point where you cannot be quiet, that that overflows so much that everyone sees it in your life. Verse 6, So when they came together, they asked Him, Lord, will you at this time restore the kingdom of Israel? Jesus replied, It is not for you to know the times or season that the Father has fixed by His own authority. But let's get you focused again, get you back into the right direction. You will receive power. Not just receive what was promised, but power from on high. And if you'll notice that that scripture section started, or the whole book started, with... I wrote about all that, all that Jesus began to do and teach until the day He was taken up to heaven after giving instructions through the Holy Spirit. Look at Jesus' life and see how His life was patterned by the power and direction of the Holy Spirit. As a man, flesh and blood, Jesus was empowered by the Spirit of God to live and do the things that He did in the flesh. And he was even raised from the dead by the power of God. He was directed into ministry by the power of God. The power being He, the Holy Spirit. It is not for you to know the times or seasons that the Father is fixed by His own authority, but you will receive power when the Holy Spirit comes upon you. And then there's an and, a conjunction that ties it together. And you will be my witnesses. You will give my testimony. It will be in Jerusalem, in all of Judea, in Samaria, and to the other, utter ends of the earth. And after he said this, they watched as he was taken up, and a cloud hid him from their sight. You have to go back to the Old Testament again. You have to understand that you are created in the image of God. You are created to be a holy people. God's possession, redeemed back, purchased back, ransomed back, by the blood of Jesus Christ to be His cup, or whatever it is, however you want to place that uh, image in your mind. So I want to go talk to you a little bit about what Jesus said when He told His disciples He was going away. In John chapter 14, starting in verse 15, If you love Me, you will keep My commandments. Not you might keep my commandments. You'll keep some of my commandments. You will keep my commandments. If you truly love Jesus. A call to holiness expounded upon by Jesus. Just like he expanded when he gave the Sermon on the Mount and, and other times when he said, you've heard it said. If you don't want to be guilty of committing adultery, don't ever look at a woman lustfully because you've already committed adultery. If you don't want to be guilty of murder, don't be angry with your brother. If you want to be like Christ, then you need to live a holy life, which you cannot do unless you're filled to the brim with the Holy Spirit. There's not room for anything else. All of that has to be swept away and filled with the Holy Spirit. 
And I'm thinking, I don't know if you're thinking about that, that guy that swept his room out of all the demons. And yes, yeah, some of you are, see. And what condition you are when they come back. You're either with Jesus or you're against Jesus. You're either gathering for the kingdom or you're scattering. There is no compromise and you're filled entirely with the Spirit of God. And that's what Pentecost is all about. And we see that power. The power from on high coming down in such a way that everyone heard the noise. It sounded like a violent tornado, but yet we did not see a wind. This incredible energy, sound, and everything. And the people came out to see what was going on. And what happened is, oh, we're back to the Tower of Babel and we're back we're to Revelation when we get to that point. That men of every tribe and every nation and every language was proclaiming that Jesus Christ is the King of kings and Lord of lords. Jesus said it is better for him to leave than to stay here so that the power, the gift that he promised would come upon you and I. <clears throat> Verse 16 of John 14, I will ask the Father and he will give you another advocate to be with you forever, the spirit of truth. The world cannot receive him because it neither sees him nor knows him. But you do, but you do know him for he abides with you and will be in you. I will not leave you as orphans. I will come to you. In a little while the world will see me no more, but you will see me. Because I live, you also will live. On that day you will know that I am, in, I am in my Father, and you are in me, and I am in you. Whoever has, whoever has my commandments and keeps them is the one who loves me. The one who loves me will be loved by my Father, and I will love him and reveal myself to, to him." Judas, not a scary, to ask him, Lord, why are you going to reveal yourself to us and not to the world? Jesus replied, If anyone loves me, he will keep my word. Are you seeing a pattern here? <clears throat> my Father will love him, and he will come to him and make our home with him. Now, as we go through some of the things today, think back to the Old Testament. All that reading that you read through, and like, oh, I'll get through this passage eventually. Think about the tabernacle. And how God wanted to dwell with His people. And now He makes His home with you and I. Individually as believers. All I can say to that is, wow! God dwells inside of you, each and every one of us. To empower us to live a life like Christ, little Christ in this world. To be a spring of living water. Wow. Verse 24, Whoever does not love me does not keep my words. We have the opposite here. The word that you hear is not my own, but it is from the Father who sent me. All this I have spoken to you while I am still here, in flesh and blood speaking to you with your physical perceptions. Verse 26, But, now we have the opposite of that, the Advocate, the Holy Spirit, whom the Father will send in my name will teach you all things and remind you of everything I have told you. So we have to now focus on thy kingdom come, thy will be done. The spiritual realities instead of just the physical realities. The fact that we are part of God's kingdom here and now on this earth. That we fight a battle not of flesh and blood but of spirits and principalities and powers and they're waging a war against the very souls of each and every one around you including yourself but if you're baptized by the Holy Spirit the devil can't have your soul can he but he can lead you to being ineffective in the kingdom and I said lead you because he cannot make you he has no power in your life whatsoever don't forget that you are filled totally by the Spirit of God to live a life that brings Him worth and draw others into the kingdom. The Advocate will teach you all things and will remind you of everything that I have told you. So what is your mission? What were you created to do? Are you a witness of Jesus Christ? Are you His hands and feet? Has the Spirit come together to enable each one of us to knit us together as one body so that we can bring glory and honor to God and we can complete the mission that's set before us? What was the mission of the apostles? To spread 
the gospel message, the good news of Jesus Christ. Emmanuel, God with us, salvation to men through Jesus Christ. It is our calling as a church, as a human being, as a created vessel in God's image, filled with the Holy Spirit, to have the power to do what believers before this never had the power to do. The holy standard set by God, and now you have the power to live it. So I'm going to give you a little history lesson, a little Old Testament lesson, and I'm not a scholar theologian on this, so, so bear with me. Three major feasts for you that we're going to talk about today. Passover, the Feast of Tabernacles or Booths, and the Feast of Weeks. Now you know what Passover is, right? Now let's think back to the Old Testament and think about that and the plagues and the bondage of the people in Israel and the gods and, and goddesses of the Egyptian empire and Pharaoh thinking he was God himself and God giving him plenty of time to change his mind, his way of thinking. Till God hardened his heart where his mind couldn't be changed anymore. At that point, <laughs> game over. And Moses, the messenger for God, continued to ask Pharaoh to let God's people go so that they could worship him. All of these plagues, all of these mighty miracles by the finger of God, however you want to look at it, the sorcerers and magicians of this world, by how, whatever power they were able to, were able to mimic those things. But then finally, finally, we get to the last plague, the death of every firstborn male child. But not if you believe in God's redemptive plan and you take a sacrificial lamb and you slay it and you write the blood on the doorpost of your home. The doorpost of your home, the first place you're supposed to be a witness at. That this is the house that God dwells in. <laughs> he dwells in this house now. And that you're covered by that blood so that the angel of death would pass over, which Jesus Christ is the sacrificial lamb. So Passover, for many, 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 many years, they celebrated. And it's one of the three feasts where they were called to go to Jerusalem, to the city of God, to the holy temple, to Mount Zion. We can use, use these different words. To worship. And it was in these times that Jesus did and said many significant things on, on these festivals also. It was also the time when Jesus was slain as our Passover lamb. So think about all of those things. And how God led them out of captivity. He led them into the wilderness a time of temptation, but also a time of testing and a time that God was providing for them. They got the law. They got the, the requirements of the tabernacle. They, they were led by a, a uh, pillar of uh, fire and a cloud. They got to experience God's presence in thunder and rumblings on the mountain, but they couldn't approach. Think of all these things, and I'm just giving you little dots so you can fill in the rest. They were supplied manna. Think about the priests. Think about fixing their eyes on the uh, staff when the serpents came. Think about the destroying angel that came. God has a holy standard for His people. He has created them to worship Him, to have no other gods before Him. To be in a right relationship with Him and to be in a right relationship with one another where you don't covet, where you don't have any other gods, where you bring Him praise and honor. And all of this is celebrated in this Passover celebration, the one that Jesus longed to eat with them even when there was one in His midst that betrayed Him. Okay, the next feast is the Feast of Weeks. We're going to skip that for a minute. We're going to go back to it. But let's call that the spring harvest season. Where the first fruits of the harvest... Oh, Jesus said, pray, because the harvest is great, but the workers are few, didn't He? 
the first of the harvest season, where again this celebration has gone on for, for years and years to bring God glory and honor, to realize He's the one that provides all things, and to point to the Messiah for true redemption. Then we have the Feast of Tabernacles or Sukkot or booths where the people would actually dwell in tents, sometimes made of palm leaves like they put down when Jesus came into Jerusalem as king, to realize that they were temporary citizens in this earth, that they needed to rely on God to provide them for their daily bread, that everything that they had they needed to thank God for because He is the creator and giver of all things. And it was at this festival and the greatest day of this festival that Jesus literally got up and said to drink from me. Now picture this just a second and I can't even fathom it because I, I don't know enough about it. But it's the height of the ceremony and everybody is watching and the candelabra, the menorah, we we'll use the right term there, comes down and the priest has the ceremonial jars uh, with the water and everything, and Jesus just gets up, and everything's quiet. And Jesus gets up, and from John 7, 37 says, If anyone is thirsty, let him come to me and drink. Whoever believes in me, as the Scripture has said, streams of living water will flow from them. He was speaking about the Spirit, whom those who believed in Him were later to receive, for the Spirit had not yet been given. This was in the fall festival of harvest at the Feast of Tabernacles. Now I've got a video coming up. Logan's going to get it ready. It'll give you a little more on this.